bride and groom. Carol! Oh, my God. After the preview screening of the film, we asked Barry how he felt about the finished product. It's gone through some slight twists and turns, but nevertheless, I think it's uh, a very funny film and an up film. I don't think it's, uh, it's not a depressing film by any means. It's a good laugh and, and it's also quite sad as well. It's him. Are you sure it's him? Yeah, it's a light hour, Gerald. Yeah, then I do so swear. About seven years ago, um, my closest friend, David English, uh, and myself were driving to uh, Criteria Recording Studios in Miami where I was uh, in the process of producing uh, the Guilty album, Barbara Streisand album. And during these drives, uh, David comes over to America every now and again and we, you know, we have a good laugh and he comes back to England again. And this is one of those periods and we were driving to the studio and this is a time, every time we would drive to the studio, we would try and com come up with an idea for anything. It doesn't matter what it was. We just like to come up with ideas. and. Um, and on this day, it, it was this idea. What would you do if you were given no time to live? If you were, this is obviously a very common question all over the world right now. Um, what does, how does a person react? And, uh, and what happens to the brain and what happens to the human being? And we concocted the idea of, obviously it was ourselves. It was, we, we were the two young guys and we were terminally ill with leukemia. And we were in a hospital in England. And we have no time left. So. Um, we decide to go crazy and escape, steal an ambulance, go to somewhere where, where life is totally free, and there's only one place that I can think of that's really like that, and it's Amsterdam. We've got to strike while the situation's hot. Listen, I'll handle the body language. You come in from time to time with something fascinating in French. We're in Holland. What makes you think they're French? Well, come on, the nasal. Tell us when was twice. <laughs> I've been. I've, I've got no fingernails left. I really don't know um, whether it's uh, for under 15s, over 15s, uh, adults. Uh, uh, being a sort of adult area myself, um, it makes me laugh. I love the film. I like the idea of, of the sadness in it too. Um, it's very hard to say so. I hope everybody likes it, but obviously not everybody will. An unlikely setting for a comedy, but when Bancroft, an English lawyer, finds himself sharing a terminal ward with Decker, an American footballer, he persuades him that laughter is the only way to cope. The world, he maintains, is divided into fearless hawks and timid pigeons, and they're going to be hawks, regardless of their predicament. Timothy Dalton and Anthony Edwards star in a film which is the result of a conversation seven years ago between Barry Gibb of the Bee Gees and an old friend, David English. There was news on the radio of a hurricane and uh, they were broadcasting it. They were getting up to two-day warnings, you know. And we were sort of talking about what if there really was a bad hurricane and it came and there was no time left. What would you do if you found out? Anyway, the conversation went into uh, what would we do if we found out there was no time left? What would anybody do? Would we go and do something we'd always wanted to do? Would we, you know, visit relatives or would you go and have a great time somewhere or would you party all the way out, you know? And uh, that idea just as we made more and more notes on it, became the basis for this film. They both drawn their, each to their strengths. And because Anthony Edwards plays a, a sportsman. He's a footballer. Yeah, and it's terrible to be, uh, have that disability, having been a powerful, a very macho guy, being American, always wanted to be a winner. And there he is, a kind of, uh, not too well. And yeah. Bancroft kind of gets him out of that, come on, you know, you've got to live for it. Yeah. And then having said that, as they go on the road, it's uh, Anthony Edwards who then pulls Bancroft through. So they're a great, great kind of uh, team. <laughs> On the evening he became the music industry's latest movie mogul, Barry Gibb was determined to celebrate in style, and the other brothers Gibb turned out to lend family support. Batting for David English were friends such as Ian Botham on his first big night out since his back operation, and the England captain Graham Gooch, doubtless hoping a quiet night at the pictures might take his mind off the West Indian bowlers. The critics haven't been that kind to Hawks, but last night at least one pundit was impressed. Yeah, I think it's a great film. I think it's, um, it's possible. It could happen in real life. And uh, it's very humorous. Uh, it's witty. 
it's quick, you know, it's sharp, I enjoyed it, it's got everything. Even with this film, even though Robin and I are not involved uh, in, in it with Baz Barry is, we, we sort of helped him one way or another by the main theme, which is written by the three of us. But well, that's probably yeah. instrumental. But we do hear that Barry will come to our premiere too. Yes, he said he's <laughs> going to come to ours. <laughs> no, it's just something that the three of us yeah. always wanted to do since we were kids. We've always wanted to make music and make films. And we support each other. No. Seeing something on the screen for the first time that you envisaged um, is quite a shock. And for me, a very pleasant shock. Come on, you fall.